Housechat.com. At Windwood Bulk, we have what your garden needs to look healthy and beautiful. Unlike big box store bag mulch, we use only the best part of the tree. Do what the pros do and go where the pros go. Download the Local 3 News and Weather apps now. We're going to give you some fun plans for the weekend of June 14th and 15th. It's going to feel a little bit nostalgic, I think. Jeff Parker, Sherry Kitts are here. They are representing the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors. Did you I say it the right way? You did. Yes. <laughs> and congratulations to Chattanooga because, once again, we are the hosting city for the National Convention. So good to see you both. Thank you. Good yeah, to see you. you. Great to be yeah. here. I say the nostalgia part of it because um, Jeff was telling me a story of how he kind of got hooked and you were that kid that would peer in the jewelry store window and loved watching the tick, tick, tick of the clock. And the watchmakers. The and the watchmakers. Yeah. Yeah. You, Sherry, it was your husband and the railroad yeah. and pocket watches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this is, I mean, all of us, I think, probably have some type of story with the grandfather's pocket watch or a special thing of your grandmother's, a mantle clock. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we live in a world where we all have cell phones and so many people no longer wear a watch. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a sad thing. It mm -hmm. is sad. Actually, I wear both. <laughs> <laughs> you have a watch for either hand. You have yeah, an Apple that, Watch. That's communications and this is a proper wristwatch. So let's talk about this convention <laughs> um, because it is at the convention center over two days, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, Friday the 14th is members only. Mm -hmm. Um, but what types of things are we going to be seeing? Because you said, Jeff, they're coming from all over the country, I guess. All over the country and in some cases internationally. We have some folks coming uh, to talk about carriage clocks from Australia. We have a gentleman from France um, who's developed a 3D rendering program for some of the world's most famous clocks that you couldn't ordinarily see, but there they are right in front of you, holographically rendered, and you can do research yeah. on them. And it's it's wonderful stuff as, as well as details about um, different functions of how clocks work, how watches work, the different manufacturers from two or three hundred years ago, um, things like that. Okay. So there's lots of different different so programs for everybody. So you brought with you a few representations. You can't fit much on these little tables, but what is this one here? This That's clock? an early 1800s kitchen or mantel clock. And I brought it because it's actually one of my favorites. It's been fully restored. The gold gilding work is on the columns, and it's got a beautiful painted glass on it, and it keeps very good time. Okay, so it's still functioning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it like a piano where you have to tune it every so often? Do you need to have a pendulum clock? Um, it does have a little pendulum. It's not, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where you service a clock like this probably every two to three years okay. is sufficient. And it really just needs maintenance and cleaning. Sometimes parts after 100 or 200 years wear down. I would so imagine. you have to replace them. But it, it's more like maintenance. They're mm -hmm. really, really strongly overbuilt and so they last. This one's early 1800s. Mm -hmm. This little guy here you brought with you, Sherry. What's the story? Yeah, it's, it? it's probably around the 1900s, early 1900s. Yeah. I'd say it's an industrial novelty clock. So are and the mechanics of them both the same or does the mechanics of clock making evolve over the decades? They're very centuries? different. <laughs> They're very different and they have evolved. In mm -hmm. other words, the principles that make them go are the same, Julie. But the, the engines, if you will, or the, the movements that mm -hmm. make them work are very, very different. And is that because the um, inventor, if you will, of each clock, just they had a different brain? So they approached the concept of clock making it, it's differently? It's a number of sometimes. different things. Yeah. It's, yeah, sometimes, but it's more like okay. if you look, this is a good sized mantle clock. That's a lot smaller. Uh -huh. And then there's wristwatches. Right. So as technology, improved as engineering and science improved things got smaller right. things got more complicated really just like modern technology it was just a different time of the world where industry just kept improving and people would look at things and say i bet i can do that better have you ever been to monticello Yes. Yeah. So, you know, when you go, if you've been to Monticello, you go in the front door and Thomas the, the Jefferson's yeah. clock. And yeah. the hole in the floor, so yeah. the basic yeah. go all yeah. the way down. Yeah. That's so, a weight-driven clock, and, yeah. and that is the engine of that clock. These are spring-driven, this one's spring too, right? Yes. These are both spring-driven clocks. So, so, no weights. No weights. But okay. like my tall so clock in different. my living room mm -hmm. has a great big 30-pound weight in it. So, <laughs> so at, like at Monticello, a quick history lesson, that weight-driven clock, was that his creation, though? Wasn't it his 
concept? Did he build that? I think he did. I think it was. So that would have been, what, mid-1700s that that would have happened? And just you go fast forward 50, 60 years, and you've got this little guy. And suddenly you can do it on a mantle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. this one chimes and strikes. So it's like. Very interesting. Okay, at the convention, you can pull out your pocket watch if you want to. (laughs) What's the story (laughs) on that? (laughs) My husband gave me this to work on the railroad, but I knew I'd break it, so I never actually used it on the railroad. I used an old Timex. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Keeps on ticking, uh-huh. even t- uh, but um, yeah, this is uh, these are works of art. They're beautiful works of art. And um, yeah. uh, my husband, what I was going to say about about these was these came later. People didn't do that miniaturization for a so long people time. Can see it. Um, people didn't do the there you go. <laughs> people didn't do that miniaturization um, you just for, still, for a long time. They had to yeah. do the um, they had to the, the clocks came first that yeah. were very accurate. Right, but these came along in late 1700s, yeah. early 1800s, very accurate. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going to take us all over the place. On Friday, if you're a member of the association, that's your day. Mm-hmm. Saturday is the day that's open to the public on June yes. 15th. If you want to do some shopping, um, that's, your day. that's your day. It's $10 yeah. to get in and kind yep. of see what all there is. But then there will also be educational events going on where you can learn from these experts, is that Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and Mm -hmm. we have an exhibition that's open to the public. It doesn't cost anything to go in. People are welcome to attend our lectures and programs. You're not appraising, but you know enough and you have enough contacts there that if you've got your grandmother's pocket watch and you want to bring it in, uh, bring it and give it a try and somebody might be able to tell you something. Many of the experts in the world, uh, or at least the country, are going to be there that can look at it and know what it is and we have books to look it up and we can look it up online. It's, yeah. You guess this clock will still be ticking in 200 years? At least 100. I can can say that for sure. I won't be, but it will. (laughs) Because neurology is so interesting that we hope that people continue to treasure these. Yeah. Items. Well, and we're really trying to appeal now to the younger generations. Yeah. It's like things like makers fairs. There's not a lot of clock stuff there. There's not a lot of watch stuff there. But well, I've seen kids get really fascinated by them. Well, let, we've got to wrap it up. But here's yeah. the thing. Um, if you want to go to natcon.nawcc.org, that's their website. And you can find out because they have all types of ongoing uh events where you can join and be a member. Yeah. I would say the easiest thing is just mark June 14th and 15th on your calendar and head down to the convention center. Yeah. Bring 10 bucks if you want to do the shopping, mm-hmm. but talk to them and find out more about the craft. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Thanks so much, Julie. Thank Seven you, minutes went by fast. That yeah. is really fast. Yeah. Huh? Declare your independence from big box retailers at Mercantile at the Ridge. Browse over 100 individual shops all under one roof. Apparel, collectibles, home decor, unique gifts, come see for yourself. Shop local this summer at Mercantile at the Ridge. 6725 Ringgold Road, East Ridge. Exit 1 off I-75. Welcome to Mountain Oaks Manor, where timeless love stories come to life amidst historic splendor. At Mountain Oaks Manor, every detail is tailored to perfection, ensuring your wedding is as enchanting as your love story. From the ceremony to the reception, begin your forever at Mountain Oaks Manor. Does your home have roof issues? Call Century Roofing. Century Roofing is local, family-owned, nationally ranked, and serving your neighborhood. Call Century Roofing today, because your home deserves the best roof on the block. Big time at Hamrick's Jaw Dropping Extreme Bargains event. Alfred Dunner and Ruby Road, 60% off. Men select golf polos and shorts, $8.98. Chab Sportswear, $17.98. Southern Gal Tees, $8.49. 75-foot bullet hose, $29.98. Ruby Horsepower or Hurricane Spin Mop, $25. And huge discounts on Men's Carhartt. Hamrick's Jaw Dropping Extreme Bargains event. In downtown Lafayette, Georgia, the buzz is all about the Bee Boutique at Pigeon Mountain.